Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. um, we have um, uh, the next segment of our meeting, which is uh, jumping into action form and action grid um, and talking about how those work. Uh, so if this is, if you've not used the modules before, this would be a great way of just kind of walking through um, how to set up the module. We, we've we've uh, used numerous types of uh, functionality for the module, uh, for both modules. So uh, with that, it might help. And uh, I don't have all of the answers, believe me, by any stretch. These are both, both rather complex modules. Um, I, as I'm going through this, I may very well be pointing out, out those things along the way. So if you are a user of these tools and you have an answer on uh, how uh, what I did could be done better, or if you want to answer one of the questions that I pose along the way, then please do. We'd certainly appreciate uh, the, uh, the dialogue. So uh, with that, I'm going to switch over to a different website and... Um, uh, you should all be able to see this. I'm currently on the, here, I'm going to go to the home page so you get a sense of what we're talking about. Uh, very cool murder mystery conference that happens in Chicago uh, every February. And uh, Sprocket has been the uh, web uh, master for uh, these folks for the last few years and very pleased to, uh, to work with them. Um, they add items to the site themselves. Uh, but they, of course, are not programmers. And so when uh, registration came along, they wanted to know what is it that we could do for them. We had um, uh, th they have some specific needs. Uh, it's not a uh, yes, I'll be there or no, I won't kind of a simple registration. There's a uh, basic event registration built into the event module that is part of the core of DNN. Um, so that's something, but it couldn't, couldn't quite be used uh, for what they needed because they had a lot of different um, combinations of things that they wanted. Uh, so we were uh, wrestling with what kind of tool to use. And we used uh, um, registration from uh, in manager uh, some time back, uh, but but uh, it developed a problem. We ran into uh, a problem during the year while we were using the tool, uh, and then we couldn't find them. The uh, the developer uh, uh, basically closed up shop, uh, which was disappointing for us. We had uh, developed the entire system using that module. Um, we had. Um, uh, for the most part, it was working just fine. There was a couple of details, especially in uh, the users wanting to make changes, because once you went in and tried to make a change to the user's record, um, it would break. And that was the big problem. Uh, and that was uh, an important feature that they wanted to have. The users could go in and say, yes, I'm going to be there. And oh, by the way, some other time I, I decided I wanted to uh, add something to my registration, and that should have been uh, able to. Uh, should have been able to do that with this module, but um, because it was um, uh, reported in the documentation that it could do that. Uh, and and yet it, it could very well be how we configured it. Uh, no, uh, we're, we're not saying anything bad uh, about the module, it was that the module had a problem. We don't know. Uh, the killer is that the, uh, the modular developer, the module developer, uh, stop supporting the module. And uh, with that, we had to come up with something else. At that point, we were looking at, is there other registration systems? Uh, since then, there have been a couple of them, but at the time, that was the, the registration tool of choice. Uh, it did have various options that you can add to registration. So it was, uh, it, it did seem to fit the bill, but then again, we had this problem. So uh, what we did was we uh, looked at uh, just creating raw forms, you know, just creating forms uh, and letting the users go in and fill out those forms. Then uh, once the uh, once the user filled it out, we gave them the ability to go back in and, and make some changes. Um, and we did that with a couple of different forms. Uh, and then the form that we chose to use was uh, action forms from DNN Sharp. So let me take you to the registration. The, the conference is over. They just had the conference in February. That's why it was fresh in our minds. And uh, uh, with that, I kind of show you what the screens were that people used and saw. 
if you wanted to go to the conference, you would go to the 2015 registration. This, this is listed here now because I'm logged in as an administrator of the site, but because the conference is over, this um, for the rest of the you know, general public and users is shut off. Its, uh, it's uh, permission is changed so that only administrators can see it. So, but, um, but you'll be able to see it. So um, we'll walk through the process and show you what action form looks like. Um, once you click on the page, um, we, we broke it up so that uh, if they started the process and didn't finish it, and I'll explain that in more detail in a moment, uh, that they could click a link and they would go to a page that would allow them to uh, uh, just answer the last couple of questions and actually uh, get into paying the for the conference. Um, originally, when we built the site, uh, uh, when we built the uh, registration using action forms, we put it, we built it in two pages. The first page was tell us about yourself. The second page was uh, what special things do you want at the conference? And what we found is we had a large amount of shopping cart abandonment syndrome where they filled in the first page, told us about themselves. And then when it went to uh, the next page, which was the uh, what options do you want for the conference, uh, they didn't finish the job. So we ended up with half finished registrations. Uh, and so we gave them the ability. We sent out an email blast, a couple of different ones, to those that had gone through pr uh, page one but not page two, asking them to come back and fill it in. And a good number of people did come back and, and uh, finished the process. Uh, but some people apparently uh, got to the point where they added up the options and, I guess, decided not to do it. So. Um, what we uh, uh, what we did was we changed registration so it's all a single page and that's what you're about to see. So um, you go down through the list, you get an idea of what the thing costs, and when you get to the start registration, uh, click on that button. Now you're on the page that has the uh, action form. So let's kind of walk through what the action form does. First item that we ask is what days are you attending? Uh, the second question we ask is what package that you would like. There's nothing listed here under what package you would like except the question, uh, which is like the initial st statement. It's like the uh, check, uh, you know, which option you want kind of a thing that you often see at the top of a select list of uh, drop downs. The attending. Uh, when you select the attending, that changes the packages that are available. So let's first click here on which days, and it shows you that you have these options. You could do the entire conference, or just Friday, or just Saturday. And we gave a last option, which is I'm a student. I want all three days, but a student pass is a very different thing. See already that there's complexity in the uh, conference registration system. So let's say that we want to be at the conference for all three days. Click on that. Now that I've done that, now which package would you like? Changes. And again, I will show you the mechanism behind the the um, this uh, how this works. A very simple mechanism, very nice mechanism, and he ties it together. Uh, he being Bogdan of DNN Sharp. Uh, so I can say I want meals and entertainment along with the conference. Uh, and I want this special Saturday uh, afternoon event uh, added to the whole thing, uh, or I want all of it, and I'm going to bring somebody along with that's going to eat uh, meals with me, uh, and uh, they are, we're going to do that, and all, and both of us are going to go to tea, or maybe I just want to do the um, uh, the sessions and not pay for the meals, and so I have all these different options. I'm going to just choose the top one. It automatically puts the amount of money um, currently owed in the total field. Um, then uh, also you noticed that this wasn't there a moment ago. The vegetarian meals option wasn't there because you hadn't picked that you wanted meals. If I chose only the sessions, then I don't get the vegetarian option. So all of that happens automatically with the action form. So I'm going to go back here and choose meals. And sure, I'm going to be a vegetarian. If, for instance, I wanted to bring a companion, that companion has the option of having vegetarian meals too. 
Uh, so let's leave it at that one. So I'll also notice as I've been switching back and forth, the price has been changing down here in the total field. Uh, a couple other things that you may want to pay for and uh, participate in is the Pitch Perfect, where you as an author of a murder mystery uh, may want to pitch it to an agent and kind of like a practice run. That's what they did there. And if you did want that, great. Otherwise, uh, no, you didn't want it. And we wanted um, them to choose one or the other and not leave it blank, have uh, no question what their answer was. If you just had radio buttons and they weren't filled in, they might have missed it. In this case, uh, want to pitch, um, has to, they can't choose, uh, want to just pitch, they have to answer one or the, uh, the other of these two second options. I'm gonna say no thanks. Uh, the master class is special courses, uh, and you may want to take that uh, one or two. Um, they, at the last minute, they changed so that two was for 75. It was more of an incentive uh, to get more people to sign up for master classes at the last minute. Otherwise, it was a larger price. Uh, in my case, I'm going to say yes. I want to take two classes and change the and the price change. So uh, you now see an amount paid field. That's because I'm an administrator. That is usually not there on the form. But since I'm an administrator, I see all of the fields that are needed. Uh, the next one, though, is something that everybody sees, and that is what payment method. Uh, it's defaulted to PayPal. But if they want to pay by check, they can pay by check. And then we get their information. Uh, my uh, email is in here because I'm logged in as an administrator, and the form is smart enough since it's pulling from the DNN user profile, it puts my email in there automatically, but uh, the rest of the information I need to fill in. Uh, and I could fill in, are you a librarian, etc. Then um, fill in a couple fields like what's the uh, your latest or your best known book or series, uh, and a little bit about yourself. And what they want to do is they want to uh, put all of this information into a program so uh, that people can see it. And so they ask for this type of information. At the very end, they ask, do you want to be considered a panelist? Do you want to be, you know, participate in the actual May conference? May I have your attention, please? Starting now in the multipurpose room is a program for teens, financial planning for young adults. Teens can imagine their future and learn how to finance it. Topics include how to pay for college, managing scholarship funds, credit card use, budgeting, and much more. Please join us now in the multi-purpose room, the room just off the lobby. Thank you. This section here is where they can um, ask, uh, where we ask them um, to tell us about themselves, and so they can provide that information. Um, uh, the last section is give us a username and password because as soon as they're done filling this form successfully, we're going to create a user account for them in the DNN world, in the DNN space. Cool thing about that ability is that once the user uh, is, is registered with DNN, all that information about themselves, uh, their uh, uh, basic contact information, the uh, these pieces here and their books and their bio and their photo are all put into the DNN user profile from DNN's uh, DNN Sharp's action form. So he has the ability to drop that in there. And uh, the last item is, do you agree to the terms and conditions? And if you do, great. Uh, that's um, If you didn't, it wouldn't let you uh, get through it. It'll pop a little message that says you have to agree. Uh, and then likewise, throughout the form, if you didn't fill in the, the elements on the form, if you didn't make choices, it would give you errors. All of that error handling is done using action forms. Uh, and then when we're all done with that, the next screen is, thank you very much. Uh, if you're paying by check, make sure to mail it to the appropriate address. Um, and if it uh, was, uh, if they selected PayPal, uh, they would find themselves at PayPal. Uh, so let's actually go in and manage the form so that we can see what the form looks like to build. Click on manage form. And this is the actual uh, uh, back end of action forms. So uh, it's a number of things for general settings. And then all of the items that uh, we've asked for are all listed here. To create a new item, all you got to do is add um, a field. 
and by adding a field it would get dropped in here. Uh, if you wanted to rearrange where these things are on the page, you could switch to layout mode. Uh, it's a very nice interface that he developed, uh, and it's based on Bootstrap and the grid system of, of 12 segments. And uh, uh, what we did here was we just laid things out so that they would uh, all fit nicely in a section on the page. Uh, the vegetarian and vegetarian companion fields, for instance, those checkboxes, we pushed them in because we didn't want the checkbox to be hanging uh, to the left of the rest of the form. So we just moved it over. Uh, it's easy to move over. You just click and you drag and it drops it into that space. That's how simple it is. Uh, and you can also add, you can change the size of the elements. You can move them around. Uh, so the layout mode is very nice. Uh, now, when you want to uh, do something specific to an item, then you click on the, uh, the item itself. Uh, the where it's attending is the name of the field. And underneath, uh, as I click on it, I see the uh, right below that expand and I see a whole bunch of uh, specifics about this field. So let's take a quick look at this field. Uh, the attending field, this is the one where we asked, uh, is it um, what days? So if I scroll down, um, the items, um, if there's no selection, what should that uh, say? And remember it said right at the top, which days choose first to see the package options. Uh, notice below here, we have the items and he uses the convention of um, uh, title and value. So this is what shows in the dropdown, and this is the value uh, that's going to be stored in a database. All right. Um, and then uh, they're all listed here. Now, um, the magic is the link to, and this links to the package field. All right. Uh, oh, you know what? I just said that incorrectly. It's the other way around. This is all by itself. It's just a drop down and you select one of these. The next field, and we'll just scroll down to the next field and ignore the rest of it, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The next field, package, is where we linked. We linked to attending. So in other words, this the, the, uh, the behavior of this field is dependent or linked to the answer of the previous field, the attending field. Okay, so now how does that work? Here are all of the items that are possible based on what options were chosen um, above. So if the option of the full conference, the value full, was in the field called attending, then the following items after the slash will show up in the drop down of what package you want. If Friday only was what you chose, so the value of Friday was picked in attending, then these are the options that would appear in packages for Friday, et cetera. So a very simple mechanism. Uh, if student was chosen for attending, then there's only the one option. And sessions only, no meals, because that's all that they wanted to do for students. So that's how this mechanism works. The linking one to the next is a very uh, powerful system. Lots of people do it. Think of a uh, uh, wanting to uh, register a car, make and model. Well, first you say what kind of car it is. Is it a Ford? Is it a Honda? Is it a Lexus? What have you? And then uh, from there, it uh, you, you'll want to choose what model of Ford or Honda, et cetera, that you're using. This mechanism makes that really easy to do. So let's scroll down the rest of it to show what other things there are involved. Uh, another very powerful mechanism is the bind expression. Um, Bob Dunn uh, went through all of this in a lot of detail in a previous um, uh, segment. So I won't deal with um, the ones that are blank, but the binding really gives you a lot of power. Uh, it allows you to make um, uh, references between the links. It allows you to set a value of one field based on a behavior of another field. Um, all of that happens in the bind expression. As we scroll down, uh, we'll see how some of the other um, 
items, like the total, for instance, is being manipulated by uh, via the bind expressions. And then you can validate um, uh, that kind of stuff. The vegetarian, um, let's take a look at vegetarian. I mentioned that it only shows up if they chose um, a certain value. So this is how uh, uh, this works. It only shows, it's kind of interesting, if the uh, index of the word meals, in other words, this little JavaScript statement um, is uh, meals, the word meals shows up in the value of package, or the word reception shows up in the value of package. All right. So if either of those is the case, then uh, because remember we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, meals, companion, you could do those things plus full. So we have to find some way of saying uh, when does that, um, when when um, would we want to show um, uh, the choice of vegetarian or not? And if they're not choosing meals, if they're not going to be at the receptions, then there's uh, there's no food, therefore there's no issue of vegetarian or not. So that's what the bind expression does. It forces the uh, the display or not display the hit, the hiding of that of this field. So um, continue on. Uh, package price is a hidden value. All right, uh, because um, uh, they don't really. Uh, need to see the package price, but I need to know the package price's value. So let's jump down to total and take a look at what total is doing, uh, how that, how total works. Uh, it just says the total dollar amount. The value of total is always equal to the pitch price plus the master price plus the package price. So those three things, which, which, uh, option you want. Uh, you're going to be there all three days. You're going to be there Monday, Tuesday, uh, uh, Friday or Saturday. Are you going to be there uh, with meals, etc.? cetera? Um, those are the package. But are you going to choose to join a, a pitch perfect? Uh, or are you going to take a master class? And if, if so, which master class? Uh, all of that happens in total by writing this simple um, JavaScript expression. Notice the field names are in brackets and that's um, the action forms uh, reads through and sees tokens. In fact, I think he states it in numerous places that his product called MyTokens um, is uh, fully supported in here. So if there's other tokens that are being used on the site, like a session variable or a cookie or uh, anything else that you have uh, saved somewhere else, you can take advantage of that here. So I think that kind of gives you a sense of the, you know, how we used things uh, in the fields. Now let's go to the, uh, the last uh, items here, which is the register button. So that's the one button we have at the bottom of the page. Uh, a button is different from fields in that it uh, has actions associated with it. Uh, again, you don't have to show a button, so you can um, hide the button. Um, it, it, only, it only matters if a particular condition is met. Cool stuff. Now, here's the on-click handler. I mentioned that um, the bottom of the form had a username and password. That's so that they can register. So one of his click handlers is user registration. So if you click on that, it, it explains you, know, you could do some um, specific stuff and some specific, you know, log in uh, if the user already exists. So you can do some nice things uh, with that. Um, uh, what I remember about that is that if um, uh, if they log in, uh, if you set that and they have the wrong password, there's a problem there. And I didn't quite understand how to fix it. So what I did was I left it unchecked. So this is always going to be a new user using this form. Uh, I would like to have had it so that it was uh, either... Uh, an existing user, and I could have used an existing username and password, uh, but I couldn't quite figure out, um, and my deadline was such that this worked out fine. Uh, basically, what happened is if they did have a user account, uh, which would be rather odd, uh, but it's possible, I guess, then they would just create a new one. And so if they created the name, uh, 
John Smith uh, uh, before. Um, this time they probably wrote something like John Smith too, and that did actually happen. So um, it all worked out. Uh, once they register, you update the user profile, which is very cool because what happens there is all of those values that was uh, that were related to the uh, uh, to a profile, like the person's uh, address and email and uh, zip code and phone number and all that stuff that we asked for, plus the biography, uh, all got put into the uh, uh, into the person's profile after registering, then we don't have to manage it anymore. It's all part of DNN and we can do more things with it, which we hope to do in the future with them. Right now, it's basically just put in there. They used some of it for the uh, for their program uh, guide when during the conference, but um, what we really would like is for them to share it and build a user community uh, using this system, and that's something that uh, we, we keep uh, uh, reminding them of, and hopefully they'll use it in the coming year. Uh, one last thing that, that you can do with the user profile is um, you can set the display name, and one nice thing about, author, about this thing is that authors often have a pen name and we asked them we gave them a field to say what their pen name is so if their name is john smith but their pen name is uh sherlock holmes or whatever then uh they can put their um uh, pen name in there and we would set the display name again for later on when we're uh using a user community then uh they can go by uh their pen name as their display name uh, a couple of other things. We created a uh, an, uh, an account called attendee. Uh, I'm sorry, a role called attendee, and we wanted to be able to just track using a simple report module um, uh, how many people were in the role attendee, and that basically says who was uh, attending. And we have a page on the website that says who's attending, and it gives everybody's name, their display name. Um, and then the next thing, uh, we ran an SQL query to write uh, all of that information into a database. Um, his system has the ability to do that already. Um, it is, in effect, a database, right? Uh, the form is. But I'll show you later on the, uh, uh, the grid um, uh, post a couple of problems. We didn't quite know how to edit uh, some of the uh, individual pieces of information properly and 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 who has the rights to edit what and what page they should go to and such. So we uh, we decided to manage it slightly differently. Instead of, of using the grid to manage an action form, uh, you'll understand this in a moment, um, instead of using the grid to manage an action form, we use the grid to manage the SQL uh, table and here is the table. So once all of that stuff uh, was requested, uh, we put the pertinent pieces of information that we needed to be able to manage uh, for registration, like how much do they pay and did they pay it, stuff like that. Uh, we put that into an SQL query. After we did that, we send uh, the people a mail um, so that they see that yes, they're uh, they're registered. Don't forget. Um, uh, if you uh, if if you attempted to pay with PayPal and did not, then let us know. If you uh, paid with PayPal, thank you. If you didn't pay with PayPal, then um, uh, please send a check to this address. And that's all in the email. But that email also goes to the conference registrars so that they see that yet another person has uh, registered for their conference. And then the last thing here: collect PayPal payment is a module that calls on PayPal. When PayPal comes back, um, uh, we redirect to some other page and that other page is the thank you page. So that's how all of the uh, action form works and it works quite nicely. So um, I'll leave the, uh, you know, pick up a copy of action form. Uh, he has a trial period for it, so try it out. Uh, come back and watch this video if you have some questions. Uh, uh, Bogdan and his staff are great at answering questions. He has a forum system. Uh, so uh, we're, uh, uh, well, again, there were some questions that we had. Uh, we couldn't quite figure out. We were tight on deadline, we chose to go a particular path. You might have chose to do something differently. Um, you can certainly uh, uh, let us know what that might have been. We'd ha be happy to have that dialogue with you.
So I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top of the page. Oh, by the way, a simple additional uh, item. If you make any changes, the save button lights up. If you haven't touched anything, now we went in and clicked a few things back and forth. Um, and I think I unchecked and checked something. So with that, uh, it asks you to save the the work and then going back takes you back to the form uh, i'm going to jump instead to the uh, payments page and we'll talk about the other dnn sharp product called dnn uh, i'm sorry dnn sharp action grid so i'm going to leave this page um, i uh, changed the format or the skin for this page that's why it looks uh, so much different than the other one but what you see underneath, uh, and I also made a slight change for some uh, privacy, and that is I took out the person's last name so you wouldn't um, go hunting down somebody and ask them what they thought of the conference or whatever. Uh, but at any rate, for their privacy, uh, all I'm seeing is their first name. Uh, and then um, you would see here um, I'm grabbing information from that uh, SQL table that I just mentioned uh, and looking to see what they bought uh, did they ask for the master class or the pitch perfect? How much was the total bill and how did they pay? And then I also say, uh, when did they, uh, in this case, when they started means, uh, when did they, uh, what, what information do I have in the table? I had to build this table I mentioned to you earlier about the uh, cart abandonment problem that we had. Uh, so I had information in, um, the, the two tables, uh, you know, each of those pages were individual reports from uh, action form, two different action forms. And so I had um, disparate pieces of information and I didn't know how to combine those things. So um, I did a report dump um, of each of them and turned around and used a um, uh, an SQL builder to create a big um uh, uh, basically a big uh, insert statement for getting those pieces of information into a single table. And this is what we're looking at, the SQL table. From that point, then I changed the action form to insert into the table. And there's another form on the site in case they had uh, already started the process uh, that they could go in and finish the process if they logged in and that would update their record in the table. Uh, and that happened on a number of cases. As you can see here with Carolyn, she did not come back. And so we don't have the second uh, uh, bit of information from her, which packages she chose in, in case. In fact, we're going to use her as an example uh, in just a moment. So notice there's a number of people here that um, uh, had... Um, uh, filled in and if you scroll down you see all the different people that had paid uh, one thing that uh, uh, that you'll notice here is that you have a PayPal um, that uh, Chalice had purchased uh, but it's marked to zero well we don't come back and change anything in the form after PayPal we just uh, redirect them uh, uh, to the thank you page we did that because we wanted the client, the, the people running the conference, to be coming to this page and checking uh, when a check comes in or when uh, and, and or reconcile with PayPal to be sure that um, their uh, money is being collected. And it was it's easy enough with the action form. All you have to do is click on the title and it'll sort the list by that. Uh, column, which is great because they can just sort by uh, zeros, um, which would tell them, okay, these folks uh, haven't paid yet. Uh, but if it were uh, for PayPal, it said, go into PayPal, take a look and see that they paid, make sure that you're happy with what they did and they paid the right amount and all of that. Uh, and if so, then market is paid. And so we created a button, button for them that was Mark is paid. So we're going to actually check this. They did not uh, go through and, and uh, update all of their stuff. So let's let's do that for you. Let's go Mark is paid. Uh, and it comes here, says Mark is paid, yes, uh, or cancel. And I'm going to say yes. And it's going to uh, spin around, go into the database, um, do the thing, and come back. And so the PayPal um, uh, is now marked as paid and the amount paid is filled in. So um, uh, a simple uh, 
um, call to SQL to update that is in here, and we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, the other thing is, do you want to see the details? If you clicked on this, you would see um, the basically the previous page that you were looking at, the form itself, but with all of the information filled in. And we're not going to show you that again for privacy, but that's what that button does. Uh, and then if you wanted to get rid of the record, you click uh, delete. And in this case, uh, we're going to get rid of Carolyn because she never came back and we don't need that, um, that record anymore. Um, she's a user in the database, so it won't hurt to remove her from this table. Uh, so we will. And if I click on that, um, are you sure you want to do this? You won't be able to blame others. <laughs> Is the default message with uh, from uh, Bogdan because he has a great sense of humor. So uh, I left it in there because I was. Uh, I enjoyed it. So, uh, but yes, that is the case. Uh, yes, we're pretty sure. So we delete it. It spins along here and comes back. And we'll notice in a moment that Chalice, uh, rather Carolyn, is no longer listed. There's a couple other people that are doing the same thing, but we won't bother. So that's what the action form, uh, action grid shows us. Let's take a look at how to manage action grid. Uh, again, there's some general settings and then there's the data source. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to change the data source because this gives you an idea of how to set this up. So the data source that I chose was a SQL query, uh, but there are other sources. You can choose uh, a, a standard uh, database table from DNN uh, and it'll just pull in the information. Um, and I could have done that actually. I could have just said the database is SWI can conf red, which is the uh, uh, Sprocket website's conference registration table that we created. Uh, I could have just said that for database table, but originally I had some special query uh, a where clause. So, um, uh, and, and the order uh, also, it would have ordered it um, by the uh, index in the data table. So I decided to use SQL query. I also could have said, uh, make it an action form. So it could have gone to the stuff that was collected right in the action form that you had seen and, and pulled it from there. But remember, I had other information from a previous form that was also collected. So I needed to do the SQL query. Um, and then that's the query and the ID column that I wanted to use uh, was the user ID and the, you know, that button that says uh, uh, take a look and edit it. Uh, there you go. There's the edit column right there. So it, you actually tell what page to go to and notice this last part here, ID equals user ID that uh, will tell um, this particular uh, uh form that I built, um, what record to go in and grab. And there's a function that uh, Bogdan has um, on uh, in action forms that allows me to, to, uh, to load user information from a particular record. That's what that does. Uh, and that's it. And uh, I, if I made a change, I would update this case, let's cancel it. And it comes back and this is the information that I'm showing. First name, uh, I'm not showing the badge name. Um, uh, what package it is, the master class, the picture perfect, what total it is, uh, did they pay, uh, and then the started date. And this this looks exactly like um, uh, you know the uh, the stuff that you saw before when you click it expands uh, is exactly the same mechanism as action forms. Uh, in this case, it, it he's uh, making it so that it is uh, mobile aware, uh, responsive. So. Um, uh, that's why it's visible on this information, so it's very flexible. And then capabilities, um, uh, it can be sorted, etc. So that's the kind of stuff that he asks for here. If I wanted to get rid of this, I didn't want to show it anymore. I just click on the garbage can, and this line uh, would be removed after I clicked the save, which would light up. All right, so that's how those things work. Uh, item button. Now, here's the, the difference with the grid versus um, the buttons for the forms. Uh, item button is uh, uh, you put a button right on the line. The grid item uh, is, at the, or the grid button is at the bottom of the, um, of the nice report. You can put a button sort of like um, clear all or uh, send an email to everybody in the list or uh, something like that could be a grid button that you would add. Uh, in my case, I didn't use that. So the mark paid, let's see what that does. 
Um, I used the Mark Paid as the auto, but notice there's nothing listed here as the title because all I wanted was the icon. The icon was the dollar glyph icon USD. Uh, and I wanted to use the, uh, the glyph in the field. Uh, if I were to put a title in here, like if I would have said uh, Mark Paid, and then also specified the glyph, it would have had a dollar sign and the words Mark Paid. Um, confirmation message I made the different than the one that he had before was uh, uh, you may want to blame somebody. Then another nice thing is, is you can make it so that certain people see the button, but other people don't. So if you want levels of viewing of the reports, uh, levels of permissions so that some people can see the stuff but not change the stuff, you can set that here and use the DNN role system for that. I created a role called registrar and of course the DNN role of administrators is there and I chose those two so that they could see this button. Once the button is clicked, what action does it take? In this case, it executes a query. So the query is update the table, set the amount paid equal to the total, and I have a field called date modified, which I grab today's date and drop it in there. And uh, it's based on the current user ID. And that's how the uh, query works. And then the uh, last thing is redirect to the portal page. I just redirect to the same page. That's why you saw the page refresh. So that's how the action could work. So very powerful thing. What we did see, and I'll, um, I'll wrap up here uh, with a quick observation. Um, this mechanism here, um, when we went to edit a record, uh, we were having trouble with actually editing it and returning back to here with the various update, uh, the registration button and what it would do. And so we were confused as to what that would do. But again, we ran out of time. So it was easy enough to, um, to lay it out the way I did it here, uh, made a copy of the page that I had before um, so that the uh, all of the actions that are, are uh, occurring when the person fills it in are not occurring when the information is being updated. And that worked out okay, but that's something that I, uh, someday I'll, I'll uh, get an, uh, an answer from Bogdan. And um, uh, if you might happen to be listening, Bogdan, go ahead and add it to the comments on the article in DNN. So that's pretty much um, um, it for the, the use of the action form and action grid and uh, real life application. Uh, hope it was helpful for you. Uh, I'm going to, uh, well, actually, I'm going to just wrap up the meeting now, uh, because that's it for this evening. Um, the, uh, the next meeting is, uh, March 11th. Uh, again, it's the second Wednesday of the month. It always is second Wednesday of the month. Um, and it's typically um, in the evening, typically seven o'clock. Uh, we have had variations um, over the months uh, whenever we're doing a virtual one. And it's mostly because some of the folks, when it is virtual, mm -hmm. um, they need to, uh, uh, sometimes they want to get back to their office at home rather than try to run it in their office at work. And uh, Chicago has plenty of traffic. So we oftentimes have it a little bit later, but uh, typically it's uh, typically at seven o'clock. So next month, uh, we look forward to.